Said it's only you know the angel watches over me. Singing on. My 
Savior Jesus at the gates away. The streets are beautiful and paved with gold. I'll get a mansion and never grow. Just a fiery old hey, hey. You can imagine the look on the people's face If you could see all oh, the agony yeah. Because there are no Where you'll always cry When life is so much easier in heaven Oh, it's cool It's cool It's so shining and pleasing to your eyes built by none other than our God on high yeah the skies are beautiful and they're clear as can be there is no better place to be young and free Because there no one will hear your begging plea. Worst is eternity, we'll always cry, cry. When life is so much easier up in heaven, oh, oh. Ooh. 
honest it is, honest it is. If I 
I had one plea, if I had one plea, it would be Jesus keeping me near the cross, near the cross. At your cross, there's forgiveness. At your cross, there is mercy. At your cross, there is love.
Good morning, church. Good morning, family, friends. Uh, it is again that God has blessed us yet with another day, another day to be able to come out and worship his name in spirit and truth, another day to be able to acknowledge him, another day to be able to say thank you to him. Uh, we know we live and move and have our very being just simply because of who God is. I'm so happy and grateful grateful to uh, be in this position today uh, to be able to bring a word from the Lord that will be encouraging, maybe helpful to you as you uh, journey on this uh, very difficult road that leads uh, to heaven, a very narrow road, a road that is filled with all types of obstacles, a road that is filled with many challenges, a road that Satan uh, constantly uh, peruses up and down in order to take our focus off of the Almighty God. I'm remembering that the Bible says in Psalm the 27th chapter verse number one that the Lord is my light and my salvation in whom shall I fear. The Lord is the strength of my life in whom shall I be afraid. Church we know the answer to that question is no one. We are not afraid of anyone, not afraid of Satan and his angels and his orchestrated work against God and the church. Good to be able to uh, teach and to preach in this manner. Uh, we are still in the season of COVID-19, the season of the corona uh, virus. Many of our uh, preachers and uh, the pastors who are uh, mounting pulpits throughout uh, this nation are doing it in this very fashion. We are live streaming the messages via Facebook, uh, YouTube, and whatever means of social media there are out there to help us to understand that God is still reigning. God is still a sovereign. God is still in, contr in control, and he still rules in heaven and on this earth. If you will, turn your Bibles to the Old Testament, to 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter, verse number 12. 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter, verse number 12. You remember the Apostle Paul in Romans, the 15th chapter, verse number 4, uh, said whatsoever things are written for time or in earlier times were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. We go back to the Old Testament for the purpose of learning. Uh, we know that Paul even said in 2 Corinthians or rather 2 Timothy 
the uh, uh, sixth chapter, uh, um, when he said all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctoring, for reproof, for uh, correction, uh, for the all instructions in righteous with righteousness. We know uh, that when Paul wrote this, he was speaking specifically to all of the scripture uh, that are in the Old Testament. And as we now have the complete written word of God, we know that all scripture consists of everything in the Old Testament and everything in the New, Test in the, uh, New Testament. So we go back to the Testament for the purpose of learning from the Almighty God. Second Chronicles, the 20th chapter, verse number 12. I'll be reading from the King James Version of the Bible, and it says, O our God, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us, neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon the church family and friends have you ever been in a situation where you really didn't know what to do have you ever been involved in circumstances that you were unable to navigate through to create calm or peace or tranquility have you ever uh, been thrusted into circumstances that uh, brought you to your knees. Uh, you were fearful. You were afraid, shaken. Uh, you were weakened by uh, the circumstances that you had been placed in. Have you ever been in a point in your life where you just didn't know what to do? Uh, you didn't know how to do it. Uh, you didn't know when to do it. You just didn't know what you were going to do. You might be someone who is in a position of leadership. You may be someone in a position where you are responsible for a multitude of people. It may be on your job that you are uh, the head uh, manager. Uh, you are the district manager, the division manager. Maybe you are the one that runs the company. You are the CEO. And you've been thrust into a situation where you're not sure what to do. Let me bring that a little closer to home. Maybe you are a mother who is managing a household. Uh, you have done everything to ensure that your children are raised in the admonition of the Lord. Uh, you may have taught them what is right. Uh, they have been under your tutorship for years, but yet now you've been thrusted into uh, the situation, these circumstances that involves your children and the law of this land. Maybe you're just a person who supervises and you have a multiplicity of employees that you manage, uh, you train, you teach to be proficient in a job, but yet uh, there's this mighty task that is not just on you, but it's on all of those who you train and all of those who you teach and all of those who you supervise, all of those who you try to help to encourage, to calm, to uh, keep uh, everyone on the same page so that the Past is completed, but yet you've been thrust into a situation where you really don't know what to do. It's a complex situation. It's a perplexing situation. It's a situation that keeps you up at night where you lose sleep and you really don't know what to do. You don't know how to do it. You don't know when to do it. You don't know what strategy to put together. You don't know the action plan. You just don't know what to do. Church, if we're judgment day honest, family and friends, I believe that we've all been in situations where we don't know what to do. We don't know who to call on. Uh, the help that we thought we would get cannot be reached. 
I, I sent the message. I, I called the number. I received no answer. I, I, I sent the text message. I forwarded the email. I sent the Snapchat. I was on Facebook and I said I needed the help. The YouTube video went out. It showed that I needed all the help, but I got no response. I received no help. I, I believe we've all been in that situation where the doctor was unable to be reached. The psychologist was unable to be obtained. Uh, the lawyer was nowhere to be found. Uh, the return phone call from the family counselor never took place. I'm talking about times when you and I need to understand that we must keep our eyes on the Lord when there is no one else available when no one else calls when there is no return message when there is no response to our email when there is no help from family and friends when your closest friends are nowhere to be found and you really don't know what to do church we need to understand that our eyes need to be on the Lord when disease strikes when powers come against us when swords are upon us when pestilence is on us, disease is on us, when COVID-19, the coronavirus is on us, and we really are unsure as to what to do, how to do it, when to do it. Church, I am imparting to us on this day. I'm suggesting to us on this day that when we don't know what to do, when we don't know how to do it, when we don't know when to do it, we need to keep our eyes on the Lord. The tag for this morning's lesson is keep eyes on the Lord. Eyes on the Lord. Church, I want you to look at our text this morning and I'm going to set up the backdrop of our text of this morning and begin to Research Second Chronicles, the 20th chapter, focusing on verse at number 12 that says, Oh God, will I not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us, neither know what we to do, but our eyes are upon thee. Church, I want you to understand that in our text, Judah, uh, was being invaded by a mighty and strong, a diligent army, a, a very aggressive army. Uh, this army consisted of the nation of Mo uh, Moab. Uh, the Moabites were coming. The Ammonites were coming. Uh, the Edomites were coming. Uh, they had come together as this great nation, this great force, and they were coming to destroy Judah. King Jehoshaphat uh, was the king who was in power during this time. You remember Jehoshaphat uh, was the king of Asa. And Jehoshaphat reigned over Judah for 25 years. King Jehoshaphat, his name means Jehovah has judged. Did you listen to that church? Jehovah has judged. King Jehoshaphat was faced with a great and a powerful multitude that was coming to destroy them. If you look at verse number two, it said, they came, there came some who told Jehoshaphat, saying, there cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea of the side of Syria, and behold, they are in Hazan, Tamar, which is England did. 
Jehoshaphat knew that this army was a, a mighty army. It was a strong army. It was an army that had defeated many a nation. The Moabites were made known as a most gruesome and a most tactful and a most destructive group of people or an army of people. And they had come together and have formed an alliance with the Ammonites and the Edomites, which made them a massive and powerful and even greater nation. And church, I want you to see something. I want you to see the humanity in King Jehoshaphat. The Bible says that when the king heard of the greatness of the army that was approaching them, he feared. That's right. Church, the king feared. The leader of Judah feared. The leader of the nation of Judah was scared. Church, he was afraid. He was frightened by what he had heard. He had become nervous. Anyone ever been nervous because you knew that something was coming? It was strong. It was something that was going to tear you down. Something that was going to destroy your character. Something that would kill your personality. Something that was coming to weaken your ability to be able to persuade or convince it was coming. And the king, as strong as he was, the king who was over the mighty nation of Judah was afraid. He was frightened. He became nervous. He was fearful. Church, family, and friends, this king was shaken to the core. And I'm here to tell you, have you ever been so terrified, so frightened, so fearful that when you would stand, your knees would become weak, your legs would begin to shake, you didn't know what to do, you didn't know what to think, you were perplexed, you were confused, you, you, you just didn't know what to do, church. Have you ever been in that situation where here is where Jehoshaphat stood, frightened? fearful, looked upon as the king, the one who had all the answers, the one who knew everything, the one who had the relationship with the almighty God. Church, I'm here to tell you that sometimes those that are in leadership position find themselves in fearful moments, find themselves afraid, shaken, they are nervous, they really don't know what to do, they are perplexed, they're weak and they're shaken. You remember in 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, Paul said when we are our weakest is when we are our strongest because of our relationship that we have with the Almighty God. Church, watch what the king does. Watch what he does. In verse number four, listen to what he says. Verse number three and four, and Jehoshaphat feared, and he, he, and he set himself to seek the Lord. Uh, church, when he didn't know what to do, when he was afraid, when he was confused, when he was perplexed, and, 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 and he knew that this mighty army was coming against him, the first thing he did was sought to seek the Lord. Yes. He didn't call on all of his friends. He didn't call on the great advisors. He didn't call on the matriarch or the patriarch. He called to seek the Lord. And when he sought the Lord, the Lord answered. Listen, he said, and proclaimed a fast throughout all of Judah. Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. What do we learn from this church? It's important that even in this day, something that was written over 2,500 years ago in the book of 2 Chronicles still is vibrant and alive today that we understand when we get in these positions, 
when we know that our backs are against the wall, when we are our most afraid, when we are our most terrified, we are to seek the Lord. And, and watch this. Church, we got to understand that we've got to learn to seek the Lord. And we've got to learn to do it individually and we must learn to do it collectively. Watch this. And Judah gathered themselves to ask help of the Lord. Even all of the city of Judah came to seek. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God, our Father, are thy not the God in heaven. Church, what I'm trying to suggest to, to us today and express uh, to the family, uh, to, the, to all of uh, us who are in the body of Christ, that you and I have got to learn to come together collectively as a congregation and as a whole to pray together, to seek the Lord together. I would suggest to you today as a brotherhood, we need to come together collectively and seek the Lord and fast together and pray to the Lord together. I am suggesting that we can become a united force, a greater force, a greater force than any force that is on this, on this planet. Church, I want you to know that Jehoshaphat realized that when he saw that the Moabites had come together with the Ammonites and the Edomites and established this great forceful fighting nation, Jehoshaphat knew he could seek out those who were in a connection, who had a relationship with God. And not only was Judah there, but all of Jerusalem was there. All of the tribes of Israel were there for the purpose of fasting together, praying together. They had come together as a mighty force along with the key ingredients of the force. The almighty God was in their midst. Church, I believe that we can learn from that. Learn to pray more as individuals. Learn to pray more collectively as uh, the East Side uh, Church of Christ. Learning to pray more together in the greater metropolitan area of all of the churches of Christ, where we have come together as a brotherhood all across this nation, and we are fasting together. We are praying together. We have united together to fight the forces of evil. Church, the king, his fear now has been turned into courage because now he's asking help from the almighty God. They are seeking the counsel and the help from the almighty God. Look at verse number six. He said, and Oh God, oh Lord God. Jehoshaphat said, oh Lord God of our fathers, are thou not the God in heaven? Jehoshaphat is acknowledging that yes, God is the God of heaven. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be given all of the glory. He is the one that sits in heaven on the throne. He is the one who rules in heaven. But Jehoshaphat is pointing out that he also not only rules in heaven, but he rules down here on earth. And they are seeking his help on earth. Church, I'm suggesting to us this morning that we need to be a more prayerful church. We need to gather ourselves together and realize that the God in heaven is the same God who rules on this earth. We need to pray to the God to seek his counsel in everything that goes on. We are in this COVID-19 season, this coronavirus that has devastated this nation. It has turned uh, this world upside down. 
uh, we are in these positions where we really don't know what to do. We don't know who to listen to. We don't know to listen to the CDC when it pertains to this virus, this disease, this pestilence. We don't know if to listen to the scientists about uh, this aggressive uh, medication that they are trying or this cure that they are trying to get uh, for this disease. We don't know if we take it, it will live, or if we'll take it and if we'll die. We are perplexed. We are confused. We're not really sure who to listen to. We don't know if we should listen to CNN. We don't know if we should listen to Fox. We don't know if we should listen to OAN. We don't know if we should listen to ABC. We don't know if we can listen to CBS. We don't know if we can listen to this person, this radio personality, this television talk person. We don't know what to do. We are perplexed. We are confused over this. We don't know whether to listen to the mayor of the city. We don't know whether to listen to the governor of our state. We don't know whether we should stay at home. We don't know whether we should go in public. We don't know whether we should wear a mask. We don't know whether we should not wear a mask. We don't know if we should social distance. We don't really know what to do. We are confused and perplexed over this disease called COVID-19, this coronavirus. But I sit here on the day to let you know that if we come together, if we come together collectively as a congregation, collectively as a brotherhood, and seek the rain, seek the Almighty God, pray to the Almighty God, fast together, pray together. I'm telling you, if we keep our eyes on the Lord, all of our answers are right in front of us, church, friends, family, the answers are there. There's no reason to fear. There's no reason to be afraid. There's no reason to be frightened. There's no reason to be shaken to the core. There's no reason for us to be terrified. If we are, then we need to do like King Jehoshaphat and turn our fear, our fright into courage and seek the Lord. Pray to the Almighty God about what is going on. Listen, Jehoshaphat reminded himself and Judah and Jerusalem to keep their eyes on the Lord. Look at verse number nine. Verse number nine says, if when evil cometh upon us, as the sword, judgment, or pestilent, or famine, we stand before this house in the presence, for thy name is in the house, and cry unto thee in our afflictions, then thou will hear and help. Church, I hope that you caught that. He said, in our afflictions, if it so happens to be judgment, if it so happens to be the sword, if it so happens to be pestilent, disease, COVID-19, the coronavirus, if it so happens to be that the pantries are empty. There is no food on the shelf. There's famine in the house. There's famine in the nation. We stand before in this house. Watch this. For thy name is in this house. Church, there's more than just having your eyes on the Lord. Sometimes his name has to be uttered from our lips. And if you go back to verse number six, Jehoshaphat said, Oh Lord. He said, Oh Jehovah. And when he uses the word Jehovah, he's acknowledging that he is the existing one. There is no one 
of that is greater than him. And he takes it a step further when he says, Oh Lord, God. He says, Elohim, the divine one, the ruler, the judge of all. His name is in the house. We not only have our eyes on the Lord, but we have his name in the house. Listen, church, it does not matter the circumstances. It does not matter the situation. It does not matter the confusion or the perplexity. It does not matter those who are in power. It does not matter their positions that they have. Uh, you remember uh, that uh, the Moabites were coming. The Amorites were coming. The Edomites were coming. This was a powerful nation. A nation that set in a position to destroy all of Judah and all of Jerusalem. But Jehoshaphat had the people collectively had come together fasting, praying, encouraging one another to be courageous in the name of the Lord, the God, the existing one, the Elohim, the ruler, the judge of all, for his name is in the house of Judah. Not only is he named just there in the house, but not only did they have their eyes on the Lord. Church, I want you to know that when we have his name in our house, when the name is in, that rolls off of our lips, uh, when his word has become a part of us, when we study his word, when we are digesting his word, when we allow his word to be regurgitated out of our, our, our behavior and out of our speech, then others will see that his name is in the house uh, in, his, in his eyes, we have eyes on him. Church, and when we do that, he not only hears us, he will help us. Verse number nine again says, that if when evil cometh upon us as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house in thy presence, for thy name is in this house and cry unto thee in our afflictions, then thou will not only hear us, but you will help us. Church, I believe that God is still in the prayer answering business. I want you to see that the first thing the king did when he knew that there was intimate danger that was coming, friction was coming, he sought the Lord. The second thing he did is he gathered the congregation together collectively. And the third thing he did, they began to pray. And when they prayed, in their circumstances, in their affliction, God not only heard their prayer but he helped them i believe that the scriptures are always right that god's word is solid that his promises are true i believe that if we come together as a church in this nation and all throughout this world and we just take the examples of king jehoshaphat and judah and jerusalem and seek the Lord and pray to the Lord fast together as a nation this COVID-19 of uh, this pestilence this virus this disease can be prayed away church I believe that when we are confused when we are perplexed when the media says this and the CDC says this, when mayor says this and governor says this, doctor says that, when everybody is saying something that different, we need to seek the counsel of the almighty God. We need to come together collectively as a force. And I want you to know that if we come together collectively as a force, a force according to verse number nine, we can defeat all things. Swords, pestilence, 
judgment, a famine, a, a affliction that are thrown up, thrusted upon us when we seek the Lord. He will help us, not only hear us, but he will help us, church. God has been really good to us, and he wants us to know that he's still in charge. He still rules. And what you and I have to remember to do is that our eyes must be on the Lord. We have to fix our eyes on him, not on anything else on this planet. Fixing our eyes on the Lord. You know, the psalmist said in Psalm 121st chapter, verse number one, he said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from hence cometh my help. I will lift up my eyes to the hills until from hence cometh my help. Church, our eyes have to be on the Lord. They have to be on Jesus the Christ. Church finally, if you will, turn your Bibles to Hebrews, the 12th chapter. Hebrews, the 12th chapter, verse number two says uh, these words. Looking unto Jesus. The Hebrew writer said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. See, church, when our eyes are on the Lord, we're looking unto Jesus because he is the author and the finisher of our faith. Church, what does that say? What does that mean? Our faith has to be in Christ Jesus. We must be looking to Christ Jesus. Our eyes must be fixed on Christ Jesus who sits on the right hand of the magistrate, the majestic one, the Lord. Our eyes must be on the Lord. Church, I hope, trust, and pray that there's something that has been said today that will help us, not just to help you, but to help me as well. King Jehoshaphat was the leader. He was the king of Judah. He was perplexed. He was confused. And when he learned of a multitude of enemies coming to destroy, he became scared. He was fearful. He was weakened. He was shaken. But we know what the king did. He sought the Lord. He gathered all of the people together as a force to pray and fast throughout all of Judah and Jerusalem. You and I have to learn to pray together, to seek the Lord, learn to fast even in our affliction, even during these unusual and unprecedented, confusing and perplexing times that we live in in this world. But don't you forget it. Remember those two words. We know. We know that we are in the world. But we are not of this world. We know that we live in this world. And therefore, because we live in this world, we're subject to the things of this world. But church, we also know that we are in the church that one can read about in the Bible. We also know that Jesus is coming back for his bride, which is the church. We also know that God loves us we know that he is a forgiving God. We know that he is a kind God, a trusting God, a long-suffering God. We know that he is a forgiving God. 
And we know that God loves us unconditionally. Let's remember those words. We know. We know our names are written in the book of life. We know that our citizenship is in heaven. And we know that one day we'll spend eternity in heaven with God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and all of those who love his appearing. You've heard the word of God on the day. Church family, friends, eyes on the Lord. Remove our eyes from CNN and MB, MSNBC and Fox News and OAN and uh, telecast and this uh, radio personality, television person. Take our eyes and take them off them and set your eyes on the Lord. I'm suggesting to you today that there is no confusion there. There is no perplexity there. There is no fear when our eyes are focused on of the Lord. We started off this, this year, this new year in 2020, this new decade, and everybody was talking about having 2020 vision. Focus on the Lord. COVID-19 hit, the coronavirus hit, and I'm here to tell you our 2020 vision is gone. Our focus is no longer 2020. Our focus is no longer on the Lord. Our eyes are not on the Lord. We have lost our perspective. And we need to get it back. How do we do that? Seek the Lord. Fast. Pray. Watch our fear turn into courage. And help someone else on this journey from earth to heaven. Help someone else who's outside of the body of Christ get on the journey from earth to heaven. That's what happens when our eyes are focused on the Lord. When we have eyes on the Lord collectively as a church, as a congregation, as a brotherhood, the broadening of the borders of the kingdom will begin to take place because our focus is on God. Eyes are on the Lord. And when eyes are on the Lord, folks are being one to Christ. Souls are being added to the body of Christ. You've heard the word of God on today. If there's someone here today that wants to be baptized, we're ready to do it right now. The water is ready. The clothing is ready. The angels are ready to rejoice. The Holy Spirit is ready. The Holy Spirit has been pushing someone who is sitting here right now listening to my voice that it's time for you to put your eyes on the Lord and not on the things of this earth. How do you become a member of the blood-bought church? The church that Jesus died for when he hung on the cross. First thing one has to do is hear the word of God. Romans the 10th chapter, verse number 17 says, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Hebrews 11 chapter, verse number 6, one must believe. The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Then one has to repent of their sins according to Luke the 13th chapter verse number 3. The Bible says except ye repent ye shall all likewise perish. We all know we will possibly die the physical death but Jesus is speaking about the spiritual death. And I'm here to tell you that this day no one wants to die the spiritual death, which is the second death, which is the eternal death, which is eternal separation from God. And that's just hell all by itself. You don't have to express to me about the total darkness, the complete darkness. You don't have to express to me about the worm that never died, the fire, the heat, the ferment heat, the gnashing and of teeth and wailing. You don't have to tell me that. I know because it's complete darkness that the light is not there. That means God is not there. That's hell all by itself. Then you have to confess the sweetest name that ever rolled off mortal tongue. And that is that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. 
No greater example in the Bible of that than Acts the 8th chapter, verse number 26 through 40, that speaks of Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. Philip said, understand it, what thou read it. He said, how can I except for some man to guide me? And he taught him Jesus out of Isaiah the 53rd chapter. The Ethiopian eunuch says, here's water, what do hinder me from getting, being baptized? He said, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God? The Ethiopian responded by saying, I do believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. They stopped the chariot, they both went down into the water and came up out of the water and and the Ethiopian eunuch saw Philip no more, and he went on his way rejoicing after he was baptized. That's what you have to do. Hear the word, believe, repent of your sin, confess, and be baptized. Mark 16 and 16 says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. First Peter, the third chapter, verse number 21 says, baptism now do save us. Then we live faithfully unto death, according to Revelation, the second chapter, verse number 10. We're waiting on you. We're ready for you. God is ready. Now is the acceptable time to turn your eyes on the Lord by turning your life over to him. If there's someone who is seeking prayer requests, uh, we are uh, ready to take your prayer request. Uh, there is a slide that will be coming up, a number that you can uh, call or rather text to us your prayer request that number is 816-525-3626 and also whatever your prayer requests are if you're on facebook you're on youtube go ahead and send in your prayer request we are uh, ready uh, to pray for you we are ready to pray for you or we are ready as a church to send up a petition of prayer on your behalf, we are ready to do that right now. So send in uh, your uh, prayer requests. We are ready to pray for you. Uh, we want to pray for the Schofields. They are traveling from Jacksonville, Florida. Right now, as we speak, they're on the road. Uh, they flew into Jacksonville. They are driving back to this greater metropolitan area, Kansas City area. They're on the highway right now, so we want to make sure that we are praying for their uh, traveling grace. What are your prayer requests? Uh, send us your prayer requests. We are ready to pray for you. Sister uh, Boone says, thank God and thank you all for your prayers. I am breathing better. Thank you, Sister Boone. We're going to continue to pray for <clears throat> Sister Boone. What are your prayer requests? Anyone else? Anyone else? That number again is 816-525-36. Two six. You can send your prayer request in on that line as well, and we will take your prayer requests and uh, we will take them up to the God who sits on the throne above. Are there any other prayer requests? Sister Biddy Morgan says, pray, uh, pray for my family. My eldest living sister is struggling with dementia. The other sister having difficult dealing with, the, with, her, right, with her right now. So all need prayers. Uh, sister Biddy Morgan, we will definitely be praying for you. Uh, Miss Carly, uh, Katrin says, pray for light on my path that seems a little dark now. Uh, Sister, Boone, Sister Boone is saying, pray for uh, Brother Boone's help. We'll be praying for Brother Leo Boone and his help. Any other prayer requests? What are your prayer requests? We're going to take 
another minute or so uh, to give you an opportunity to send your prayer request in. Then we're going to go before uh, the Almighty God in prayer on your behalf. If Xavier Wallace is asking for prayer for uh, himself and family, uh, for uh, for him and all of us who are traveling this uh, very difficult and narrow path that leads to eternal life, he's asking for prayer. Sister Raglan said, thanking God for constantly blessing our family. Our brother Raglan continues to work long hours, but he is remaining spiritually strong while he is at work. Let's continue to I pray for the Raglans. We uh, thank her, Sister Raglan, for uh, uh, just giving that uh, uh, thanks, for thanking God for the blessings for the family. We should all be uh, so thankful for all the blessings. that uh, We woke up this morning with a blessing. Uh, our eyes opened. That was a blessing in itself, and we began to breathe the breath of fresh air. That's a blessing in itself, and we, we have to remember that as a congregation, that we are truly blessed. And not to take for granted the, the simplicity of some of the things that we, we have that we just forget comes from God. So we thank you for that, Sister Ragley. Any other prayer requests? You can text us a prayer request at 816-525-3626. Or you can type in in the comment portion in Facebook or either on YouTube your request. So right now we're gonna we're gonna approach the throne of the Almighty God. May we all bow our heads together and show complete reverence to who God is. Who, um, and we're gonna go and pray on behalf of those who are asking for prayer on this day. Sister Tracy Wallace is asking for forgiveness of her sins and praying that I will always keep my eyes on the Lord no matter what happens in this temporary life here on earth. We thank you, Sister Wallace. Yes, this is a temporary life, and um, we are most definitely headed in a uh, different direction, another place. Uh, the Schofields are asking prayer for Brother William uh, Perry Sr. We will most definitely be praying for him. Uh, we know he had entered back into the hospital So we will uh, definitely be praying for him. Brother William Perry Sr., we'll be praying for him. And also, Ms. Caroline Brown, pray we get number 45. Uh, we'll, pray for, we'll pray for our current president and then pray uh, for the uh, president, whether it be him or the one after him, you know, uh, Paul is very clear in 2 Timothy that we are to pray for those who are uh, in power, those in, uh, who are in those positions, those who are in leadership. And we have to understand that uh, God put number 44 in the White House for a specific reason, and he also put number 45 in the White House for a specific reason. So we have the church, we have the congregation, we have the brotherhood have to understand what our role, what our responsibility is when it pertains to that. Uh, we've got to understand, I'll say it again, that we are not, uh, we are in this world, but we're not of the world. Uh, so uh, our king, our, who resides over the kingdom that we are in, is the almighty God. Now, I should be on, on the Lord, uh, knowing that uh, what he does is what he does. His thoughts, his power is infinite. And um, so, yes, we'll be praying for him as well. Um, any other prayer requests? If there are no other prayer requests, we'll go, we'll go to the Father on the behalf of those who have petitioned prayer. Let us bow. God in heaven, it is again, you've given us this opportunity to be able to approach your throne. And God, the first thing we want to do is give you the glory that you deserve. So God, we honor you and we praise you. And God, we see that you are the reverent one, which means that you are the awesome one. That means, God, there is no one greater than you. So this is the reason why we pray to you and not men. 
We pray to you, God, because we know that you will not just only hear our prayers, but God, you will answer our prayer. God, we are in times where we need your help. We need for you to hear our prayers. But more importantly, God, on this day, we need for you to answer our prayers. God, we see the state of this nation. And God, we thank you for prayer so we could be able to talk with you, to be able to communicate with you our, our deepest sorrows, our secrets in this life that we carry with us that no one else knows about. God, we know we can talk to you about those things. God, we use this avenue of prayer to be able to say thank you to you and uh, to, 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 to continue to ask to bless us, God, and we thank you for prayer so we can tell you, God, we, we, we ask for your forgiveness when we fall. When we sin, when we transgress, when we are wrapped up in iniquity, God, we thank you for prayer that we can be able to come to you and say, forgive me, God. Forgive me for my shortcoming. Forgive me for my behavior. Forgive me because of my tongue, God. Forgive me because of the faults that I have. God, we thank you for this avenue of prayer. God, we see the nation, this world in the current position that it is in. Um. God, we see the unrest in our nation and all throughout this world, whether it's because of uh, political uh, reform that needs to happen, whether it's because of our justice system that needs reform, whether it's because of inequality, whether it's because of racism, whether it's because of, of, of straight up just hatred, God, that exists in this world. We know that in order to cure this hatred that exists in this world, God, it requires a prescription a prescription of a heavy dose of agape love, a heavy dose of Jesus. God, we know that we'll never be able to renovate this world, but as your children, we can help someone along the way. So God, we pray to you that your light will shine on this dark world. And God, we know that the only way the light can be shined in this day and time is through your children, through all of us who are on this this, this telecast, through all of us who are worshiping you today, all of those throughout this brotherhood in this world, the only way the light will ever shine, it will be through us so that those in darkness will see their way to the light. God, we are the way. We are the light. And may those that are in this world see it. May we illuminate our light in a very bright way, God, so that all can see it and know that we are your children, God. God, we come on behalf of Sister Boone, who is just sending up a thanks for giving for the power of prayer. We know in your word, James, the fifth chapter, you say to confess your faults one to another, that you be healed. The effectual prayers of a righteous man avail it much, God. But we say that you know that we pray, but you will do the raising up of the one who is ill. And God, the prayers of help. And God has raised our, our, our dear sister up to better help, where she's now able to breathe better. We just thank you so much for that, God. God, Sister Betty Morgan is praying for the family, and she's praying for her eldest sister who is struggling with dementia. So many uh, of our members, I have family members of those who are struggling with either Alzheimer's or dementia or some type of illness. And, and, and God, we pray for those who have to assist with those and are struggling with loss of memory and not knowing who they are and sometimes being combative, God, and the struggle that family members have to deal with when uh, when this disease is taking control of the body. So God, we're asking for prayer for all of them. Asking for prayer for uh, her elder sister. Asking for prayer for her sister that is uh, taking uh, care of her. And then just the family as a whole. God, we pray for the Roper family as well too. And Brother Will Roper who had a leg amputated. And God, he, his resilience is shown. And that resilience is because of the prayers of the faithful. The prayers of the faithful will help those who are ill to be raised up. You will raise them up because of our belief that we have in you. Carly is asking for prayer for light on, on the path that seems a little dark, God. We know that that light can be illuminated with your children so that she will see the way and her eyes can be on the Lord. That brother Bolivian Wallace is praying for him and his family, he's praying for the family, he's praying for me and my wife, and uh, God, we know that this path that we travel is a very difficult path, a very narrow path, but it is the absolute path that leads to everlasting life. May we never get off of it. 
May we continue to fight. May we continue to hold on to uh, your hand as you lead us and guide us down this path, God. We thank you for Xavier. We thank you for this prayer, God. We thank you for his knowledge of the word. And uh, uh, we thank you for him uh, knowing you, God. Sister Raglan is praying for uh, giving constant blessings to you for the blessings that you've given to her and family. She's asking for prayer for her husband as he continues to work long hours but he was remaining spiritually strong, God, and that's more important than anything, that we all remain spiritually strong as we strive on this journey from earth to heaven. Sister Wallace is asking for forgiveness of sin. God, we thank you so much for being a God that, that understands that we are human. We understand, you understand that we will fall along this path, God, and we thank you uh, for the fact that you have uh, uh, allowed your son to live on this earth for all of the years that he did, being in the fashion of a man, but being divinity as well, never sinning, dying on the cross for our sin, right now standing, positioning, petitioning to you about the sins that we have done, asking for forgiveness, saying, God, I, I've lived the life that they lived. I see the temptations that they are in every day. So God, she's just asking for forgiveness of her sin. Yeah. Praying that she will always keep her eyes on you no matter what happens in this very very brief, very short. James says it's a life that is but a vapor that appeared for one moment and then vanished it away. Got a very short life. May we honor you and praise you and give you all the glory in this life. Sister Brown, Caroline Brown is praying for, asking for prayer for our president who is in the office, God. Uh, we pray for him. Uh, we pray for him that uh, he too might see the light. He too might place his eyes on you. Uh, God, we know that you, there's nothing impossible for you. And the reason we know that there's nothing impossible for you because you are the creator and we are the creatures. You created man and you created uh, this existence, this earth, this universe, God. So we know that if we pray to you, a change is something that we could count on. So God, we pray for him as you've, as Paul has instructed to his young evangelist Timothy to pray for those who are in power. Pray for those who are in position. God, we go because we know prayer can change things. As we pray for someone to be lifted up from an illness. As we pray for someone to obtain a job, a better job. Or we pray for someone who uh, is traveling the highways. As we pray for someone who is going into surgery. God, we can also pray for someone who has a hardened heart. And we pray for this president. God, we pray for if he remains the the next president. We will continue to pray for him. And God, we pray for the one that may come in after him. We know that all things are done because of you, God. So we honor you and we praise you and we give you all the glory who is the king over all who are on this earth. Sister Letha Proctor is praying for all of the prayer requests. She too has joined in collectively as we pray. Praying of the mighty force for those who are in need of prayer. Sister Gina Burgeon is praying, asking for prayer for uh, her family and uh, for Sister Banks and Jametta. We continue to pray for them and Sister Banks and uh, their health and their growth, their spiritual growth. God, Sister Proctor is thanking all for the encouraging and the uplifting uh, message that was preached. And, uh, she's praying that the Heavenly Father will, will keep his eyes on us while we keep our eyes on him, God. But the Terry Smith is asking for prayer for his family and asking for prayer for his brother who is traveling. So let us continue to pray for all those who are on the highways. We pray for brother and sister Myla Schofield are there traveling from 
Florida back to the Kansas City area. God, you bless them to land safely in that area, God. And we know that we can pray to you that they will arrive, arrive back to Kansas City safely, God. That is our prayer request. And God, we also are not forgetful. We're remembering Brother William Perry, William Bill Perry. God, we know that you know and many know him who are listening to this prayer who he has experienced a stroke and uh, has Alzheimer's and, and God is struggling but is extremely resilient and bouncing back after each setback, God. So we just continue to pray for him. Uh, God, may he continue to be a blessing to his family. May they continue to see him as the man that he has always been, a great father, a great husband, a great brother in Christ. So continue to bless him, God, and we thank you for him. Uh, Mr. Ronnie L. Stewart is asking for a healing hands for him. Uh, we know that you have the power of healing, God. And we know that if we continue to pray for those who are requesting prayer for healing, God, we know you are the God that will be able to do it, God. We thank you for what you've done, God, and we just ask for prayers for all of us that we, we keep our eyes on the Lord. We keep our eyes on you, God. Not on anyone else, but put our faith and our trust and constantly, constantly be looking to your son, Jesus. God, we ask for the blessings of this congregation as we anticipating arriving back together as a congregation worshiping together in one place, God, we continue to ask for guidance in that. Lead us into the right direction as to what to do, God. And God, we just ask that you continue to be with this church as we uh, continue to look out on uh, it, it, advancements in other areas and uh, moving ourselves or relocating from out of this facility into another facility that will be able to accommodate this family in every way that we need, God. So we pray for that blessing, too. We know if we don't ask for the blessings, if we don't pray for the blessing, uh, God, you won't answer. So this day we pray for that. And we pray for it in your due time. God, watch over us and protect all of us under the sound of my voice. Continue to bless us in every way, whether it be emotionally, mental blessing, whether it be financial blessing. So many have asked for physical blessing, God. But more importantly, we ask for spiritual blessing. We ask to remain faithful to you and to have our eyes on you. It is in your son Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. At this time, we're going to go into our uh, communion. We know we are to do this upon the first day of the week. We set our minds to uh, remember what God has done for us, the communion. Communion. We are set to do the communion. Uh, we know the Bible says in Matthew, the 26th chapter, verse number 26, the Bible says these words, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it. He broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and he gave, he gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it, for this is the blood of my, this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. We do this as a memorial to remember what Jesus Christ did for us. It was nothing that we did for ourselves. We know that while we were yet sinners, Jesus died for us. We didn't do anything great. We were sinners. And Jesus died for us. As you prepare to take of the bread and the juice, let us go to the Father in prayer. Dear Father God, you, you love this world so much that you allowed your only begotten son, Jesus, to come in the fashion of a man, to die a most cruel death, to allow us to have eternal life with you. Reconciliation was taking place when your son closed his eyes on the cross and said, it is finished. God, we thank you for his death. We thank you 
for his burial. And we also thank you for the fact that he rose up out of that grave. His resurrection proves to us on this day that we too can be reunited with him, with the Father, when we die, this physical death. So God, for all of those who participate in this memorial, may they take it with a pure heart and a clean mind. It is in your son Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. This time, church, we are going to go into another part of our worship, which consists of our offering to the Lord, our tithes, and our offering uh, to the Lord. I want to read a couple of scriptures to you. Malachi, the third chapter, verse number eight and nine says, Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me, but ye say, How have ye robbed thee? And how have ye robbed thee? In tithes and in offerings. The Bible also tells us in 2 Corinthians, Apostle Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians, the 9th chapter, verse number 67. He said, but this I say, he who soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he who soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he has purpose in his heart. So let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. God says not to give grudgingly 
or a necessity, for he loveth a cheerful giver. Church, we give back because of the love that we have for our God. The love that he has for what he has done for us. Sometimes our love for him is shown in our giving. Let us remember that as we go to the Father in prayer. Our dear Father God, is again, you've given us this opportunity to approach your throne, just thanking you for what you've done. God, thanking you for the jobs that we have, the physical strength that we have in our body, the mental strength that we have in order to function in a capacity to uh, work a job, God, that provides us with physical, with the income that we need to take care of the physical body, God, and also uh, to give back a portion of what you've given to us to give to you, God. Uh, God, we know that in your word, you asked the question, will a man rob God? Will, will they rob you? Yes, they will in their tithes and their offering. God, we ask that we, be, that we not be a church or individuals that will do that, God, that we will give, and we will give not grudgingly. No one has to twist our arm to give. We know that you love those who cheerfully give. So God, may we be cheerful givers. May we be purposeful givers. May we be givers that have planned and have realized that the most important thing that we do is to give back to you. We give back to you in our resources, uh, which consists of our money, God. We give back to you in our time, our talent, and also our skill, God. We thank you for that because we know that you blessed us with it all. So, God, may we be cheerful givers, knowing that you love them. It is in your son Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. Church, I want to thank you for continuing to give uh, despite the way we have been uh, worshiping. You see on the screen there are many ways to give. Uh, you can donate by texting. If you're a first-time giver, you can donate by texting to the number, um, texting the word give to the number one eight five 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 seven two eight two three zero, and then you can be able to give that amount. It will be immediately uh, sent a notification to you of the amount uh, that has uh, been moved, uh, the transaction that has taken place, a uh, very safe way of giving. Uh, we also have Givelify, uh, which you can just uh, go to our uh, website. Uh, you can give your offering uh, through that. Our website is uh, eastsidecocls.org. Uh, you can give that way, or you can just give by mailing us a check or a money order, no cash, please, to the building. The address is 106 Southwest Fort Street in Lee Summit, Missouri. The zip code is 64063. And again, we thank those who've been giving, those who've been participating in our worship service who are uh, not members of this church uh, right now. And we are uh, begging you that when the doors open again and we are being able to come together to worship, we want you to experience our worship together with us. This uh, family, this church is a very loving family, a very kind family, a very accepting family. Uh, we love you because we know God loves you and God loves all of his uh, creation. So please do when we uh, set the date for the doors to be open again, we want you to participate uh, in our worship experience and we thank you so much for your generosity and uh, supporting the growth of the uh, the kingdom in this uh, community as well uh, if you will we'll give you that time uh, to go ahead and give up your tithes and your offering thank you Jesus has said I, well the Lord said I'm never leaving Oh Lord, that's a promise, divine word, promise that never can fail. Oh, oh, heavenly, heavenly, y'all will look like.
Church, we're going to close with a few announcements, and we are tentatively, just to let you know, we're tentatively looking at uh, uh, coming back in the building on the 19th. Uh, we are going to uh, continue to, to discuss that, and, and like I said, that plan is tentatively. Um, let's not forget T-Bone Thursday, which will take place at 8 a.m. Thursday morning. Uh, Brother uh, Scofield will be leading that devotion, and we also have the devotion that will be led on Friday at 2 p.m., uh, which is Fresh Herb Friday, and that's at 2 o'clock. All of this is via Facebook, the Eastside Church of Christ uh, Facebook. Uh, please do tune into that. Uh, very, very wonderful devotions that have been taking place if you have not been joining us, you need to join us to and participate in these devotions to kind of help us out through the course of this uh, of the week as we continue to go on. Don't forget about Wednesday night. Wednesday night Zoom call, uh, prayer call, devotion. Uh, we are in a position where we need to pray. Please share that with everyone. Uh, the devotions on Thursday and fr Fridays, all of those in your Facebook contact, hit that share button. Allow them to join in uh, with us. And then also on that Wednesday night, share the link uh, with those uh, who, are, uh, who are across this country who want to participate or rather who need to participate. Uh, there's nothing greater than us coming together as a brotherhood and praying to the Almighty God for the things that are taking place in our world right now. Uh, eyes on the Lord as we fast together, as we pray together, as we come together as a brotherhood to broaden the borders of the kingdom of God. Uh, let's also remember to um, pray for us and I endeavor to uh, do something differently with the facility that we're in. Wanted to uh, make sure we express uh, that as well. Uh, those are all the announcements we have. With that, uh, Brother Xavier Wallace is going to close us out in prayer this morning. Let us pray, church. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you again. Just thank you for another day that wasn't promised to us, Lord. And we thank you for opening our eyes up again, Lord, allowing our legs to move again, our arms 
to move, just allowing our body to move again. Just thank you, Lord. And we want to thank you for sending your son and down the cross for our sins, Lord. And we just want to thank you for the preacher, preaching another wonderful lesson, Lord. We just pray that we just gain knowledge from this lesson, Lord, and we just help others, Lord, that need it, Lord. We just want to pray that as we go out through this week, just pray that we can be strong, Lord. Hold on to your unchanging hand, Lord. And just pray that when we're in down and in need of help, just pray that we go to you first before anyone else, Lord. And we just want to pray for the people that are physically ill, mentally ill, and most of all, spiritually ill, Lord. And just pray for all the devotions that we're having and pray for the Wednesday night Bible studies that we're having, Lord. Forgive us of all of our sins, Lord. In Christ you name pray, amen. This new life that you give me. Yeah. Oh.